even in the word today. We're starting out this season talking about walking with Jesus. And um, interestingly enough, you find out sometimes in grief, in struggle, in challenges, oftentimes uh, there is, uh, I'll call him an elephant in the room. And don't be surprised if he, he may show up. But there's, there's an elephant in the room, and that elephant is, I've had some, th oh, there he is. I've had some things going on with God and haven't really talked it out with God. How many of you can admit that you don't always understand the way God does things? How many of you can admit that sometimes you pray a certain way and it does not go down that way? Can you even admit that there are times you even doubt whether the Lord really heard your prayer? I know I'm in second service now because nobody in first service would have admitted to that. But there are, there are those times. I call it the elephant in the room because we have these thoughts and ideas, but we haven't worked them out, talked them out with God because we're even afraid to admit that we're having some of these struggles. Say amen if you can. Pastor Dave is going to talk some in February about relationships with each other. Uh, it's the love month. So we're, we're going to talk about relationships with each other, not just uh, romantic, but also friendships and family relationships. We're going to talk about that. But it, there's a similar elephant in the room in that oftentimes we have these expectations, but they're not spoken expectations. So when somebody fails us, they failed us in an area that they didn't even know we expected that because we didn't tell them that was our expectation, but it was, and now we're mad. You're awful quiet. Say amen. Come on, you know you're mad. Because you thought your spouse was a mind reader. And you've even said stuff like, well, I thought you would have known. Why would I have known something that you didn't tell me? Well, I've told you before, treat me like a five-year-old in kindergarten. Tell me again and again and again so that it's not some hidden shrouded expectation that then when it doesn't happen, then there's drama and a problem. But I'm going to leave that to your pastor to talk to you about that. I'm going to be the bishop today. And I'm going to talk about how that works in our relationships with God. I want to take you to a passage of scripture in uh, Mark 5. And I want to read this to you. And then I'm going to say some things that I'm hoping will, will help you in your walk with Jesus. Because... You, you're going to have to, if you're going to walk with him now, anybody want to walk with him now? Okay. So if you're going to walk with him now, you're going to have to get over some of the stuff that you and God have had issues with in the past. Because if you carry that into your now, it's going to hinder what God wants to do in your life now because you are still upset about what he didn't do in 2021. I've got seven or eight people that's honest enough to say amen. The rest of y'all are like, uh, not me. Me and God are always good. I just agree with everything he does. I like everything he does. And I really love how slow he is. Because <laughs> y'all are so quiet. So I know you're good with it. And so I'll let you continue in your deception. But for those of us who are honest, sometimes how God does things really blows our minds. And I don't mean in a good way. It's like it just didn't go the way we thought it would go. And so here's a lady, a woman in the crowd, had suffered for 12 years with constant bleeding. 12 years, not days, not weeks, not months. This woman bled constantly, nonstop for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she had spent everything she had to pay them, but she had gotten no better. In fact, she had only gotten worse. And then she heard about Jesus. So she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. For she thought to herself, if I can just touch his robe, I'll be healed. Immediately, the bleeding stops. Somebody say immediately. But how many of you understand that? You got to put this in context. Immediately now, but 12 years have passed. 
So it ain't as immediate as I would like for it to be. Because I want mine to be immediate, not immediate after 12 years. How many of y'all, that ain't immediate to me. That's a long wait for an immediate healing. But if it takes that, then whatever it takes for me to get to that place where it happens immediately, then I don't want to lose heart along the way. Somebody say amen. Immediately the bleeding stopped and she could feel in her body that she'd been healed of her terrible condition. Father, I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you, Lord, for releasing me to preach it and teach it today. I want to thank you, Lord, for hearts open, ears, spiritual ears open. I want to thank you in advance. Lord, I don't know if I've ever said this to you before, but I want to thank you in advance for people getting their relationship with you healed so that they can trust you like they've never trusted you before. Do whatever you have to do in me to be as transparent as possible, to give permission to people to tell the truth about what they feel about you so that you can heal them of those feelings. I give you glory and great praise for what you're about to do in Jesus' name. And everybody said, I have a lot of unanswered questions. I've been serving Jesus since I was eight years old, and I need to tell you that everything has not worked out the way I thought it would work out. Because I was, even then, a man of faith, a boy of faith at eight years old. I believe that God heard every prayer that I prayed. And I also believed, according to 1 John 5, 13, 14, and 15, that this is the confidence that I have in him, that if I ask anything according to his will, he hears me. And if he hears me, I have the petition that I've asked of him. But I have to admit to you, after 56 years of serving him, almost 57 years of serving him, there have been seasons and moments in my life when God just didn't do it the way I thought he was going to do it. Where God just didn't show up in the timing that I expected him to show up. Where God seemed to stretch stuff out way further than I would have imagined that he would. As a 13-year-old, serving God and preaching the word, I felt like that my prayers could keep my parents together but my mom and dad got divorced in spite of my prayers I don't fully understand it but there's a, there's an elephant in the room that God and I had to talk about I had uh, I had literally prayed for people who were dead and you all asked Pastor Janine a woman fell down dead in the pulpit when I was an associate pastor when she hit the floor I laid my hands on her and I said I rebuke death in Jesus name and as I rebuke death in Jesus name and 15 20 seconds later her eyes begin to flicker she she opened her eyes with an attitude toward me and said these words to me why did you call me back she said, I was in his presence, and I was there. And all of a sudden, I, he said, you can't, you can't stay here. My son is calling you back. She said, and, and she said, and I could hear your voice, and I rebuke death in Jesus' name. I rebuke death in Jesus' name. Now, I want to know why I pray for this woman, and God supernaturally brought her back. But when my 44-year-old mother had cancer, I prayed and fasted and cried out to God, and the Lord took my mother home to be with him. I've got questions. I want to know, has anybody else in the room got questions? I've got questions about how do you work, God, how are you working and what are you doing and how do you work things out? And God, when I step out in faith, believing you and trusting you, what do I do with my baggage from the past? And how do I resolve the unresolved issues that you and I have? And what do I do about it? Can I preach for a minute? I had a 50-year-old father, died of cancer. How, how's this happen? I'm a man of God. I'm praying in faith. I'm rebuking the devil. I'm binding demons. I, I'm, I'm calling those things that be not as though they were. And I've seen God do it before, so I know he can do it because he did it for me before. But this time, he chooses not to do it. I don't have full understanding of that. But here's what I'm not going to do. I'm not going to live my life mad at God. I'm not going to live my life upset with God. But I'm going to trust God and believe. 
believe that, God, you know, even though I don't understand it, I'm going to trust you anyway. Because somebody says, well, how do you serve a God that you don't understand? I want to know how do you serve a God that you do understand? Because if I understood him, I'd be just as smart as he is. I can't serve a God whose ways are not higher than my ways, whose thoughts are not higher than my thoughts. The reason I give him glory is because I don't understand him. The reason I run after him is because I don't understand him. But not only do I not understand when he doesn't do it the way I asked him to, I don't understand why he loves me like he does. I don't understand why his mercy is available to me like it is. I don't understand his grace in my life. I don't understand why I can fall seven or eight times and he'll pick me up all over again. I don't understand God and I'm okay serving a God that I don't understand because just like I don't understand the stuff I want him to do that he doesn't do, I don't understand the stuff that I want him to do that he does do because he's that kind of God. Ah, uh, so if, so 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 it, it's, it's so even throughout this weekend, and this message has really come about as a result of me praying for you all and asking the Lord to help me to be a good pastor and a good husband to my wife in this season of her of her loss. So if the message delivers you and sets you free, you give God the glory and send Pastor Janine the love offering because y'all getting this because of her, not because of not because of me. This is her message. Message, and I'm not going to preach it all because one day she's going to preach part two. But I, but I came to a place where I, I, I thought about Lady J coining this phrase, radical faith. Remember that in the middle of all night of prayer? And she began to call out that radical faith. And then I watched her operate in radical faith in her dealings with her own sister. And I watched her anoint with oil. I watched her walk in circles. I watched her trust God. I watched her sing songs. I watched her worship. I watched her declare the word. I watched all of that and I saw what God did but once again I found myself in a place where God does something that's different than what I expected him to do and I am hearing her thinking what about my radical faith was that for me was that for somebody else did I not hear God what is wrong with my radical faith and then I was coming back to get my car on Monday because we left out here so fast on Sunday that I left my car in the garage and so I was coming in and when we pulled into the garage it was me Benjamin and Pastor to Jay. When we pulled into the garage, I heard God say, and I'm going to let y'all shout for 15, 20 seconds, but y'all going to have to come back and I got to teach for a few minutes because when I say this, there's some of y'all, it's going to set you free because God said to me when we drove up in the garage driveway, he said, you don't need radical faith until your manifestation does not match your revelation. And when your revelation does not match your manifestation, that's when you need radical faith. Can I say it a little different way? When your manifestation does not match up with your expectation that's when you need radical faith that's when you got to trust him when you don't see it trust him when you don't understand it trust him when you can't trace him you got to trust him when you can't analyze him you got to say God I'm going to trust you even though I don't understand what you're doing but I'm going to trust you I'm going to believe your word though he slay me Job says yet will I trust him prophet said though there be no 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 calves in the stall and though there be no sheep in the field and there will be no no grapes on the vine and there be no figs on the trees yet I will trust in the name of the Lord I want to know are the 10 people in the building that have made a decision God I'm going to trust you even when I don't see it I'm going to believe you when I don't see it because when I got a when I've got a manifestation over here and I got an expectation over here it's radical faith that pulls the two together because the only way I'm going to get my manifestation to match up with my revelation I'm going to have to believe God in a supernatural way I need you to tap three people say I'm getting ready to believe God in 2024 I'm getting ready to trust him in 2024 because ain't going to do no more crying about Lord I believed you to prosper me but my bills ain't paid yet that's time for radical faith God I believed you for healing but I'm still sick it's time for radical faith ain't going to be no more well maybe I ain't going back to church because I went to church and my stuff ain't straightened out yet oh no 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 this is the time for radical faith where I believe God even though I I can't see it with my eyes, touch it with my hands, hear it with my ears, taste it with my mouth, smell it with my nose. I got a sixth sense called faith, and I believe what God said. And I'm going to trust you, Lord. I'm going to trust you through my tears. 
I'm going to trust you through my brokenness. I'm going to trust you through my lonely days. I'm going to trust you in my depression. I'm going to trust you in my discouragement. I'm going to believe you when I can't see you. I'm going to trust you. Because I got history with you. You've never failed me yet. I was young and now I'm old, but I ain't seen the righteous forsaken, nor a seed begging for bread. So I'm going to trust you. You know, I'm going to trust you because what I need, I can't get from nobody else. I'm going to trust you because what I'm believing you for, the government can't give me. I'm going to trust you because my family can't meet this need. I'm going to trust you because I ain't got no other option. I'm trying to find me some folk that have run out of options. That the only option you got is to believe God. You can't let the devil slip into your thinking and make you doubt God because it didn't work out last time. Try it again. But it didn't work out last time. Try it again. But I trust him before try it again because I found that he's that kind of God he may not come when you want him but he'll be right on time I wish I had some help in this sanctified church I feel the Holy Ghost in the building every time I think about how blessed I am I say God you know what I'm going to keep my eyes on you I'm going to trust you because you're a keeper you're a miracle worker. You're a mind regulator. You're a way maker. So I'm going to put my trust in you. And whatever beef I got with you over what you didn't do, we're going to settle that today, February 4th, 2024. We're going to get that settled. I'm going to get my heart right. If I got to cry my way through, I'm going to get that thing right with you because I'm going to need you tomorrow. And I'm going to need you next week. And I'm going to need you Saturday. And I'm going to need you two weeks from now. And I'm going to need you six months from now. I ain't going to have a relationship with God that's suspect because I have not forgiven God. God for not doing it my way. Y'all didn't hear what I just said. I'm not going to have a relationship with God that's suspect because I did not forgive God. I know for some of y'all that's tough, ain't it? Because I'm saying what you've been thinking. I'm not going to have a relationship with God that is distant because I'm somewhat mad with God because I wanted something from God that I didn't get. And now I don't really trust you like I used to trust you because you didn't come through like I wanted you to come through last time. But what I'm starting to understand is this, that your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. And sometimes you don't come through the way I ask you to because you're protecting me. Sometimes you don't do it very quickly because I ain't ready for you to do it quickly. Sometimes it ain't about you, it's about me. Sometimes I didn't get my healing uh, cause I still want fried pork chops and y'all ain't gonna talk to a brother. Sometimes maybe I didn't get stuff together at home cause I wasn't really to surrender and submit to what you wanted to do. Maybe the reason my money is still funny, it ain't God's fault, it's my non-tithe paying self's fault. Y'all ain't gonna talk to a brother now. God, why didn't you bless us? Because I told you, if you bring your tithes into the storehouse, I'd open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you don't have room to receive. But why didn't you just do it anyway? Because if I'd have done it anyway, you'd have thought everything was okay. Because the only way I can get your attention is to play with your money. And so I mess with your money because that's what you pay attention to. So when you look like you're trying to go your own way, I pull your cash. Because that'll make you pray when you don't want to pray. You don't need consequences in January to pray when your money gets funny. You'll come to me when your money gets funny. So there are times I don't do it the way you asked me to do it because if I did, it would put you in a position of failure. So I wait before I do it, the Lord says, because I need you to take some steps in the right direction. I got three things to say. Y'all, I'm going home. Y'all know we had to delay service to, so y'all know I must have really went off first service. I'm not doing that disservice. Y'all give me 10 minutes, 12 minutes. I'm done in Jesus' name. Because I feel God is already working in hearts. I hear folk crying right now. I, I see tears coming down your face right now. I, I hear folks saying, God, I ain't carrying this no more. I hear folks saying, God, today is my day of deliverance. Today is my day of freedom. Because I have an expectation in 2024 that the miraculous is coming. That the unthinkable is coming. That you're going to do some stuff that's going to blow my mind in a very good way. And I don't want to let the past get in the way of my future. 
I'm not going to let my past be minimized by my, my future be minimized by my past. I'm going to trust you now like I've never trusted you before. I need to know, is there anybody in the room that'll tap three people and say, I'm going to trust him like I never trusted him before. I need you to say it with your mouth in the back. Sis, you need to say it. I know you thought it, but you need to lean over to him, tap him and say, I'm going to trust him like I never trusted him before. Look at somebody and say, 12 years of waiting. 12 years of waiting. And so the question is, and, uh, and one day Lady J will help y'all with this in part two of this message, uh, but I'm going to give you the preview on her message because what do I do when I'm waiting? I'll tell you what you do when you're waiting. While you're waiting, you keep on waiting. Uh, and having done all to stand, uh, keep standing because that's the only thing that you can do. And when you can't stand, go to your knees uh, because God will teach you how to get in a posture where you can trust him. But listen, while you're waiting for God, God, do everything you are capable of doing. Come on, talk to me. Y'all know we did a lot of time we ain't done our whole part yet. We ain't finished everything God told us to do yet. And so this woman, the Bible says, that she paid all the money she had to doctors. Oh, that's terrible. That's horrible. She lost all the money to the doctors. Oh, no, 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 no. That's what set her up for a miracle. That's a horrible thing. Them doctors took her money and she got worse. Nope. That was the setup for a miracle. Because miracles come to desperate people. You don't get miracles casual. Miracles. I, is there a desperate woman in the room? Is there a desperate man in the room that said, God, you know what, God? I ain't playing about this. I ain't casual about this. God, I am serious about you working this thing out in my life. I am trusting you every step of the way. So her seriousness is seen in her willingness to do whatever she needed to do to get what she wanted from God. And so she paid all her money out. And it doesn't say she even complained about it. She didn't go to Jesus and I'm mad, I'm upset because I gave these doctors all my money like we would have done. No, 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 no. She didn't say any of that. You know why? Because she found out, here it is, that sometimes the 12-year walk brings you to your 12-minute miracle. See, I, I got to get y'all to start thanking him for the walk you've been on. Because you've been mad about the walk, you've been mad about the wait, you've been mad about the struggle. I need you to go to clapping your hands and stomping your feet and say, God, I want to thank you for my walk. I want to thank you for my walk. I've been walking 12 years. I could have gave up in year two, but I thank you that I'm still. Anybody here, you still waiting because God kept you? If it had been left up to you, you'd have thrown in the towel. You'd have given up and said, I'm done with this. But anybody glad that God stayed with you, kept you walking, kept you trusting, and now you're just a little bit closer, a little bit closer to the miracle. So 12 years of waiting precipitates 12 minutes of crawling. Because it said he's in a parade. She comes up from behind him and you can't touch the bottom of a robe standing up. <laughs> Tap your neighbor and say, sometimes you got to get down. Sometimes you got to get down. You can't, because the him ain't up there. The him is down here. And, and sometimes that's why it took me 12 years, because God had to make me wait till I was ready to get down. I, I had too much arrogance. I had too much pride. I thought I had this on lock. But 12 years later, I know I don't. So if I can get on my knees, since I've walked for 12 years and waited for 12 years, I can crawl for 12 minutes to get to the hem of his garment, because I I believe that if I touch him, I'll be made whole. I believe if I get my hand on him, the bleeding will stop. You see, every now and then, you got to make a bold declaration to yourself. You got to stop being quiet with the enemy and you got to say something. I need you to go ahead and say something about what you expect God to do. I'm going to wait on you. Go ahead. What is it that you're waiting on him for? 
you need to declare it out of your mouth. I just believe uh, that God's going to do this for me. I believe God's going to work this out for me. Before you touch the hem of his garment, you got to already be speaking faith before you get there. And if you don't resolve some of your issues from the past, it will compromise your faith and you will not trust God the way you ought to because you don't need radical faith until your manifestation does not match your revelation. And so now you need radical faith so you can't play. You got to be ready. Anybody here, can, you ain't playing. You are ready. And so here she is on her on her knees. Oh my God, how does she crawl for 12 minutes to get to the hem of his garment? Well, if you've been waiting for 12 years, a 12 minute crawl don't bother you. If I know I ain't got to do nothing but crawl 12 more minutes, I can do 12 more minutes. I need you to tap somebody and say, I think I can do five more minutes. I think I can do two more days. I think I can do one more week. I've been waiting this long. I might as well crawl and get what I'm trusting God. And so I'm on my knees because I'm in a posture of prayer. I'm in a posture of worship because while you're waiting, you've got to get in the right posture. Can't be arrogant. You can't be into you. You got to be willing enough to get on your knees because whatever it takes for me to get to Jesus, I'm getting to him. Crowds all around in a big parade. Got his security all over the place. They talking in their little earphones, and I'm but I'm going under all that. I'm gonna miss all that stuff. I'm all that action because here's what happens. My God, I didn't even see this this morning. When you get low, it'll get it'll it'll get you up under some of the attacks. If you get low, it'll get you through some of the attacks. If you'll get low, some stuff can't get you when you get low. See, oh, that's why I stay low. And I know y'all laughing because I am short, but I stay shorter than short. I stay under the radar. I ain't trying to be bad. I ain't trying to be arrogant. I ain't trying to be known around the world. I stay low because low I find stuff that other folk don't find. I got favor low that other folk don't have. Matter of fact, Jesus said, uh, I, I, behold, I'm with you always. Low, I'm with you always. Even to the end of the earth. I said, Lord, I want to thank you. I'm going to stay low because you said you'd be with me always. So if I stay humble, he'll be with me. If I stay low, he'll be with me. If I don't make it about me, he'll be with me then he'll do stuff for me the other folk can't do. I need to know if there's anybody in the room that needs God to do stuff for you that other folk can't. I'm, I'm done, y'all. She touches it. And when she touched him, I don't, I don't, I destroy Mike. Is it back? Oh, it's back. I'm back. Another one. Hang on, lap. It's me, y'all. It ain't y'all. Y'all looking like y'all did it. I did it. It's so much anointing in here. It's breaking up the electronics. <laughs> it ain't me. It's y'all. There's so much Holy Ghost in the room. My God. There's, there's so much deliverance in the building. There, there's so much freedom in the house. I, I, I hear God say, I've come to wipe away your tears. I, I hear God say, I've come to resolve your issues. I, I hear God say, curl up in my arms. And let me hold you like you ain't never been held. I hear God say today is your day of deliverance. I hear God say weeping may endure for a night. Joy comes. I need you to holler. Joy comes. Joy comes. Joy comes. Joy. Comes. Joy. This woman is in our Bible. We are all rejoicing because this woman touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And I'm saying, Lord, thank you that she didn't give up. 
Because if, if she did, if in year four, she done had said, bump this, I ain't trusting you no more. And we wouldn't be shouting over the passage right now. I want you to catch that. Then I want you to catch this. One day they're going to tell your story. Don't let your story be the story that you quit in year four. Keep running for your grandkids. Keep running for your children. Keep running for your niece. Keep running for your nephew. Keep running for your cousins. Somebody's going to read your story. And they're going to find out you went all the way. You didn't go part of the way, but you went all the way. And out of 12 years of waiting and 12 minutes of crawling will come 12 lifetimes of giving God glory and giving God praise for what he's done. I need to know, is there anybody in the room that'll join me in giving God praise? for what he's about to do in you that's going to create a lifetime of giving God praise. Come on, stand with me or kneel with me or fall out with me, but don't sit. Just do something other than sit. Glory to God, dance with me, run with me, jump with me. Do what you want to do, but I need you to do something. I need you to make a bold declaration to somebody that this is the year of my healing. This is the year of my deliverance. This is the year of supernatural change. This is the year where me and God get our stuff together. I'm sitting here calculating years. I was 27, so I'm at 38. So mom, mama's been gone for almost 40 years. And I'm still hurting. I'm still in pain sometimes. But I ain't mad at God. I ain't mad at God. I was struggling for a while, but I ain't mad with God. Because I recognize what, who God is. And I, I recognize how God makes ways. And I recognize that God left mama here long enough to get me everything that I needed because I'm here with y'all right now because mama did her job. Y'all ain't going to talk to her, brother. Mama did her job. So I ain't mad no more. And I, and I recognize now what Simeon meant when he said to Mary in Luke 2, 35, and I'll finish here, y'all. He said, this child, this baby of yours is going to change the world. This baby of yours is going to bring life to multitudes. This baby of yours is going to suffer. This baby is going to be a joy to many. He said, and this baby is going to pierce your soul. This is 13, 14-year-old teenage mama. The prophet tells her the baby you care about to have is going to pierce your soul. So she waited 33 years from 13 or 14 to she was about 46 years old. and watched her baby die on the cross. What happens when your expectations don't match up with the manifestation? You said my baby was gone. See, y'all think about him as just her savior. That's her baby on that cross. It's her baby they spitting on. It's her baby they stabbing. That's her, that's her baby they beating. That's, that's her baby they, they laughing at while he, all his blood drains out. That's her baby. And here she's 33 years. She's been waiting. And this is what I get, God. It's the best you can do for me. But somehow. He resolved that if this is what it takes for your glory to sweep the nations and change people forever, then to God be the glory. I need to get you to throw your hand up and say, God, for the moments I didn't understand, I give you my worship. I'll yet praise you. I'll yet worship you. The 
Mary could do it, I can. Somebody said, well, but Jesus got up from the dead. I know, but he still didn't stay with her for 40 more days. Before her baby was 34 years old, her baby was gone back to heaven. And Mary's left here a 47-year-old woman trying to figure out what just happened to me over these last 33 years. And then the church was birthed. Thought, That's what this was about. And then the Holy Ghost came on the day of Pentecost, and she was there when he came. And she thought, that's what this is about. You see, I'm here to tell you that it may not happen the way you thought it was going to happen, but some stuff going to happen going to make it all right after a while. God's going to do something for you, Mary. God's going to do something for you, Joseph. God's going to do something for you. That when it's all said and done, you're going to say, Lord, it didn't work the way I thought it was going to work. But you sure did do something powerful. You sure did do something glorious. And yes, it was, it pierced my soul. But you're still good. So I'm trying to follow what Paul said. Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, if there's any virtue in it, if there's any praise in it, Think on these things while you're waiting. Get your thoughts right. While you're crawling, get your thoughts right. Learn to adjust your thoughts and think on what the Lord has done. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out. Just another day that the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil with my mind. That's why they said it, Ben. With my mind stayed on Jesus. How did he, he just another day that the Lord's kept me. Why? Because I've kept my mind on him. And so I've learned to train my mind. And, and so rather than thinking about mama dying, I think Benjamin, but Benjamin lived. He was supposed to die too, but he lived. And so, Lord, I'm gonna think on. I'm gonna think on that. Yeah, but Lord, you, you took Daddy. I know. Uh, I know. But but Roman had a defect that he he should have died in the womb or or or, or, or was born uh, born dead. But Roman is a genius and and ten or eleven years old now. God's got His hand on him. I said, see, and I, and I've learned how to how to adjust my thinking and say, Lord, rather than let the devil make me put my focus on what I don't understand, uh, let me put my focus on what I see You doing and how I see You move and how I see you working. So I give your name glory for every miracle. I'm done, y'all. I give your name glory for everything you do, everything you work out. I give you glory for it. I need you to help me praise him for what he's done, for what he's doing, for how he's working. Come on, through your tears, praise him. Through not understanding, give him worship. I, I give you permission today to admit there are times you don't see it, but yet when I don't, I'll still. Father, thank you. Every person standing, hands raised. Father. Oh. Lord, I thank you. You're so good to us as a church. And Lord, I thank you that you walk us through lessons that are not just for us, but they're for everybody. I thank you, Lord God, for trusting Lady J enough to give her revelation about radical faith and then cause her manifestation to be different than her expectation and she's still trusting you and so now we have a pattern we can follow because we see somebody else is doing it and you, we know you're no respecter of persons. You love us just the way you love her. And so, Lord, if you carried, if you're carrying her, you'll carry us too. And Lord, you'll teach us that the time we really need radical faith is when our manifestation don't match up with our revelation. When what we expected is different than what was manifested. So, Lord, let your spirit fall on this house. Let the anointing of the Spirit of God fall in this place now in Jesus' name. Lord, let a radical, supernatural, I ain't 
going back faith rise up in the people of God in this house so we do warfare with our enemy the devil uh, where we let him know that we ain't backing off we ain't backing up we are going to trust God every step of the way until healing comes until deliverance comes until prosperity comes and not just money prosperity but prosperity in relationships and prosperity in health and prosperity in the in our own mental and emotional health we thank you father come on just wave those hands in his presence if you're in the building and you never made jesus christ the lord of your life right where you are just lift your hand and say lord i come to you in jesus name i ask you to save me i ask you to take over my life i give my life to you confess that i'm a sinner and i receive jesus as my lord and savior thank you for loving me in Jesus name that I pray for those who may have prayed that prayer with me that Lord you'll secure them in the faith Lord miracles in their lives for your honor and for your glory Lord bless our church what an amazing place this is thank you for these amazing people that make up CRC and for our family and guests and friends and Lord I'm asking you in Jesus name you would be with us this week. <clears throat> As your people go to work, I pray, Lord, you go with them to work. But more than anything else, in this season of walking with Jesus, we will resolve any unresolved issues that we have with you. Embrace your will and purpose. Even if we had to get a little some counseling or some help or some encouragement, a little therapy, whatever we got to do, we are not going to let our past define our future. We believe you for great things. In Jesus' name.